All right, you guys. Ghost gave us the spoiler last week. Let's get into it right around the hour mark. Great timing, actually. Uh, Fan of Punch Breakdown number 17. It is Kellen Vieira versus Misha Tate. A little bit of a double whammy. Not more in favor of one fighter over the other. I, At least from what I looked at, uh, I guess we will find out right now. Steve watched the whole thing. He got the, the pre-scoopty scoop, and we'll get into it. No technical difficulties to be found. <laughs> so here we go. Google Drive for the win. Um, as we go full screen here. And let's see. Can I zoom a little bit? Boom, boom. Nope. It's zooming outward when I zoom in. How weird is that? All right. Well, that's okay. All right. Popcorn ready, says Centro. Had a boy. I remember when Centro first saw his first uh, Fan of Punch breakdown. He's like, what should I expect from this? Well, now look at him. Now look at him. <laughs> He's got the popcorn. He's got the popcorn. All right. Vera versus Tate, a study in positional fighting. Every fighter that has been taught by Trevor Whitman understands three fundamental positions in striking on the tracks, on the fence, and squared off. On the tracks, close stance means that your lead foot is lined up with your rear foot, and your rear foot is lined up with the opponent's lead foot. On the fence is when your lead foot is lined up with your opponent's lead foot. When your opponent turns, when your opponents turn towards you, you counter them. Uh, you can't counter them as they are stepping to readjust their position. Squared off. This is when you have your lead foot pointed towards your opponent's crotch or midsection, and they are square in relation to your stance. When the opponent is squared off, it becomes easy to strike them off balance. Strike them off balance, yeah. These positions might seem basic, but they give each of the fighters structure when it comes to chaotic nature or striking, of striking. Uh, regardless of style, pressure, ring general, uh, or versatility, it gives them a guide to which they can formulate a strategy and create tactics to achieve that strategy. But we also have to consider that Tate only trains with him on a limited basis, so the tactics of reaching those positions are not as refined as Usman, Namajunas, or Gaethje. Vera, on the other hand, was able to exploit Tate's tactical weaknesses despite her lack of knowledge of these positions. Round one. Fight! There we go. Tate attacks on the tracks. Jab of the chest lands while Tate gets her head outside Vera's lead shoulder. Tate exits on the straight line on the tracks, which is dangerous. All Vera has to do is step in and fire a rear hand, which becomes easy since Tate is recovering her balance on the tracks. She capitalizes on this later in the fight. Vera and Tate are both on the fence. Vieira L steps to regain balance and create new angle, a new angle towards Tate's lead hand, lead hand. Towards Tate's lead hand. Tate attacks on a forward line while on the fence as Vieira is circling towards Tate's lead hand. Vieira steps in with her lead foot and plants her rear foot to load her right hand. Tate is now on the tracks and stuck in the mud since Vieira attacked while Tate was stepping. When you take a step, there is a moment where you need to regather yourself back to stance. Vera timed that step perfectly. Rear hand misses, but the elbow lands. The rear elbow lands. Both fighters are now on the tracks. Vera is in line to land her rear uppercut. This is why step-up attacks on the tracks are dangerous. Whaley, Volkanovski, and Kai Karafrantz use step-up kicks while the opponent is squared or on the fence. Tate's lead body kick is crowded by Vera's step-in lead hook. Lead hook closes the door and puts Vera back to her stance. Tate is off-balanced. Vera attempts to attack on the fence by planting her rear foot and loading the rear hand. The right hand, excuse me. Tate squares up Vieira by taking a step inside. Now Vieira is the one stuck in the mud because her step is being countered. 
Tate lands a nice jab while slipping inside it. Both fighters on the tracks. Choo-choo. <laughs> now Tate is stuck in the mud while Vera counters Tate's step. Straight up. Can't move. Jab lands with some stank since Vieira transfers her weight from the rear foot to the lead foot. <laughs> some stank on it. Tate gets off the tracks and squares Vieira by pushing off her rear foot and stepping towards the midsection of Vieira. Jab to the chest lands. Tate takes a sharp step towards the lead hand to put Vieira on the fence. Tate squares up Vera by going from the fence and stepping inside and lands a jab to the neck. Vera, Vera takes a step back to get back on the tracks and does a nice job parrying the rear straight. Vera takes an L step to create a new angle and regain balance. Ring awareness. The best time to attack on the tracks is when the opponent's back is near the cage. Tate now only has two ways of escape. It's hard to move laterally in a staggered stance. This time, Vera squares up Tate to land her jab. That jab is working, man. Mm -hmm. Tate level changes to force a reaction. Vera tries to sidestep to Tate's fence. Long rant, <laughs> front kicks take no talent to throw since they don't require the flexibility of a high kick or the balance required for a low kick. Yet with the women, it's not thrown with frequency. There are only three fighters who can catch kicks effectively and punish them. One is a current champion. The other is a former champion. The last is an undersized straw weight. More women need to throw more front kicks. All right, Ghost laying it down. <laughs> This is the setup that Rose used to lance Joanna with lead jabs. It's a throwaway rear straight that brings the rear foot forward to allow her to close distance quickly for a lead jab. Counter hook lands beautifully, but here, Vieira, but hey, Vieira and Whaley were gun shy and had a bad understanding of distance, quote unquote. <laughs> Getting sassy he is now. <laughs> Round two. Fight! Mm -hmm. Both fighters on the tracks. Tate is overextended due to Vieira parrying her arm down. Tate tries to exit by flanking the lead shoulder line with her rear foot. However, she squares up or squares herself up for Vieira. Vieira squares Tate up after the exchange. Hard jab lands as Tate steps in while squared off. Both fighters take a linear retreat, which is way too common in MMA. We saw the exact same exchange we saw earlier. Tate attacks on the tracks and we are countering beautifully while Tate overextends. Tate shuffle steps from the tracks to a new position. Tate is Vieira squared. Jab lands. Tate would have more would have had more success in this fight if she kept looking to square Vieira uh, instead of attacking down the tracks. Tate has Vieira squared off. Rear foot steps up. Lead front kick lands, stopping Vera's advance. That was nice. Mm -hmm. It was needed. Vera lands her jab while Tate moves in on the tracks. 
Big instep allows Tate to close the distance while Vieira is leading, leaning back. Since Vieira leans back, Tate is able to land her rear straight. Leaning back is not the best defense when on the tracks like this. On a hair trigger, Vieira fires back by pushing off her rear leg to fire a rear straight, but Vieira was gun shy, quote unquote, and doesn't understand distance, quote unquote. <laughs> I appreciate the sass here. Vera fires her rear hand while Tate is trying to L-step. Ooh, big rear hand lands while Tate is trying to regain her balance. Vera was just touching Tate. Yeah, man. Tate leaves her stance to step over to get off the tracks. Step through by Vera, exposes the back leg, uh, the back of Tate's leg. Not the best looking low kick in terms of mechanics, no pivot or hip turnover, but very effective in kicking the back of the knee, which is what matters. This is one of the problems with being on the fence. The back of your knee is susceptible. Spun around. On the tracks, this is the second application of the low kick within a context on the tracks that Vera does nicely. Pumps jab to force a reaction. Vera slips inside to the low kick. However, the kick is not the best since Vera doesn't slip deep enough. Lovely left hook to close the door, but people keep saying that Vera was gun shy. That is true. <laughs> that is. Even the commentary said this. <laughs> On the tracks. The good thing about throwing front kicks on the tracks from the close side of that is, uh, is that it is hard for the opponent to read if it's. Um, whoops. I'm trying to go back here. Uh, if it's going to the face, which we can see it did. <laughs> Tate hits a beautiful front kick to the face, but hits the nose and not under the chin. It's a little tickle. While Vera ate a front kick to the face, she does apply the correct defense late by underhooking the leg. Vera throws a rear straight as a counter while Tate returns around, or while Tate turns around to expose the back of her head to defend it. Not the smartest thing to do. Tate would have had more success on the tracks if she brought up her rear leg, uh, brought her rear leg up like in this exchange, bringing the rear leg up allows her to close distance unexpectedly since it presents a false distance. Good jab there. Coming in hot. Round three. Fight. There we go. Round three to five have all similar. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Too quick. Uh, have all have similar exchanges from round one and two, so only the instructive moments will be highlighted for the rest of the fight. Fair enough. Tate has a long stance on the tracks. Side note, Tate is the one being punched in the face. We are not talking about what Ghost would do if he were in there with Vieira. That's for his fantasy fiction book. But we are talking about what a very good fighter should be doing against her. Tate should have used this rear foot step up to close the distance more during this fight. She would have found more success if she hit this, hit this step up behind the double jab since Vieira retreats on a straight line instead of charging with one twos like she does here. Fantasy fiction shout outs. How about that? <laughs> Got it all. Kicking the trailing leg of an opponent is always a good thing. Doing a step inside low kick while the opponent circles away is even cooler. Bam. Bam, ba bam. While Tate tries to position her body low so she can kick high, her eyes make her eyes makes the that was the attack obvious. My eyes couldn't read. Vera <laughs> counters jabs on Tate's step up.
Vera ends her combination while with a rear straight while Tate is off balanced. Sticking out the lead hand to force Tate's, Tate to jab, and uh, Vera's cross counter was money throughout the fight. Tate level changes with a rear leg, step up. This is another great way to hide the step up, but not done nearly enough by Tate. This time, Vieira sees the step up and intercepts the step with a jab. All right, little pause here. <laughs> More counter punching from Vieira when both fighters are on the track. Round four. Fight. Tate would have been a lot more successful if she fought the entire fight the way she starts the first 30 seconds of round four. Ugh, bummer to hear it. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is very rare for fighters to make adjustments and stay disciplined with the fight, uh, with that pace for an entire fight. This sequence shows the effectiveness of Tate bringing her rear foot up to close the distance and change the dynamics of her lead hand. Wangin. Yeah, that was definitely a solid start there for Misha. Um, more lovely counter rear hands by Vieira when Tate attacks on the tracks. Gave her a little stocked and slappy there. Jab by Tate draws out the cross counter by Aviera. Tate level changes once Vieira's hips square up for the cross counter using convincing boxing exchanges, understanding how Vieira likes to counter, and entering with level changes would have been a great strategy for Tate. Vera, as seen in rounds one through three, ends the exchange with a rear hand counter. Just sneaks it on in there. Everyone in MMA needs to throw more front kicks. <laughs> Squaring up the opponent and throwing the body jab also needs to be thrown more in MMA. The series last week. Round five. Fight. Lovely counter. One, two down the tracks by Vera. Mm. Yeah. You know, she had that all day. Oh, yeah. Tate threw one front kick in each round and was very successful with it the few times she threw it. In future fights, she can build a strategy around building a foundation with the front kick. Yeah, she used it nicely. While not set up with deception, Vera did a great job firing her jab while both fighters are on the tracks. Her jab was so precise. Yeah, look at that. Just touching. Yeah. Touch and go. Touch and go. Yeah. And it was fucking working, man. That whole fight. Yeah, and then we get the counter uppercut right here. Landing like in the early rounds, but this one lands quite clean. Vera slips to the inside to set up her counter hook. Fighters that slip to the inside consistently and Shane Bur are Shane... Our Shane Burgos and Vicente Luque slipping inside is very dangerous, which makes these fighters fun to watch. Great job by Vera closing the door with her lead hook counter.
Breaking the posture with a collar tie and punching off the clinch break is something every MMA fighter needs to do more. Y'all could learn. <laughs> Countering the step with the jab, as we saw earlier in the fight. Tate does an outside slip to get on the fence in order to land a body jab. Quite possibly the coolest moment of the fight. Disappointing it only happened once. Hooking off the body jab. This is a combination. This combination is as rare as rooster teeth, since the person throwing it has the shift, has to shift the weight to the back foot twice while advancing. More counter jabs land by Vera while Tate attacks on the tracks. Another counter jab by Vera. Ooh, All right. Money. Money. Vieira did a great job managing distance and firing counters on a hair trigger. Although Vieira normally has a pressure fighting style against Tate, she fought with patience and timing. Why is it the case when a pressure fighter decides to change their strategy with a measured approach, they are often labeled as gun shy or doesn't understand how to manage the distance? Since when is it ever smart? When is, when is it ever a smart idea to run in the face, uh, in face first to pressure? Uh, an opponent. If someone can generate KO power, wouldn't it be smart to use creative entries or counters instead of brawling, quote unquote, like some of the quote unquote intellectuals of the Twitter mailbag seem to want? He's calling out specifically the mailbag, Steve. My goodness. My I told you guys this was a good one. Juicy. <laughs> juicy, juicy. All right. Well, what do we think about that, Steve? I mean, it was literally the amount of time as the whole fight. He basically showed the fight. Roughly. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, I mean, for his first question, <laughs> essentially saying, you know, why are fighters labeled gun shy in these kind of cases? I or not understanding. I think it's, I think it's the commentary. Because I went back, I went back and watched the this fight again with the commentary on because I want to know what you guys were even talking about because I, I don't watch commentary on at all ever anymore. Um, and man, they were very bad. They were very, very bad, like horrible, bad, like fucking not UFC caliber of commentary bad. <laughs> but worse. And, and I think, and I think that, since it's you know Daniel Cormier, a champion, he's he's saying he's saying his words, and it's going into people's brains, and they're thinking since it's Daniel Cormier saying it, it's got to be true, and that ain't fucking true at all. I don't care who it is; it could be God Himself fucking saying saying that Vieira wasn't using her jab right. God Himself would be wrong. Because Vera was using the jab, right? Yeah, yeah, she was. <laughs> yeah, and it was fucking clean, and it it hurt Tate through the whole fight. Look at Tate's face after that fight; she was mangled up. That was basically because of the jab, man. Yeah, it was the commentary. The commentary is atrocious, so bad. Yeah, that one was. Like, uh, I can't, I can't deal. Much. Like I can't deal with it. Like I. I can't. This is why I turn I turn commentary off because it just ruins fights, man. Like you take your you take your eyes off of what is actually happening, and then you get you take in what the people on commentary are saying, and you're like, oh yeah, they know they know what they're talking about, right? Like you should you should be able to trust them, right? Yeah, I should. Yeah. <laughs> no, you fucking shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I think you summed that up very nicely. I was essentially going to say uh, that they say that because they don't know what they're talking about. But, I mean, that kind of goes hand in hand. Um, I don't know. I mean, ultimately, I think it's also got to just be general ignorance towards the fighters specifically. Like, yeah, I sure. promise you, for some unknown reason, 
Like a lot of people probably have seen Caitlin Bear for the very first time in that fight, unfortunately. And I noticed even before the fight, there were a lot of people who very clearly did not know who Misha Tate was. I was like, geez, it's all these casuals she, out here. She's <laughs> literally a champion. She was on the tough, one of the most watched tough shows with Ronda Rousey, of course. I mean, Ronda helped out a lot, obviously, because that was at her, like her peak. But Misha was there. She did her job in that in that show as well. Um, how the fuck does anybody who calls themselves a fan of MMA not know who Misha Tate is? I understand Catlin. I understand that. Fine, but not knowing who Misha Tate is, but did you you just started watching like a year ago, probably right. And those are the people who you should not be fucking talking to on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. Because they're a bunch of idiots. Mic drop. There you go. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah. Um, well said, sir. Um, I think... Then as for this second part, Ghost, you know you answered that yourself. <laughs> you pretty much answered your own question. So, yeah. And I love... I just love all the interaction that this segment brings because I have not checked the comments since we started because I was... You know, a lot of people were saying, you know, it was a boring. Uh, I'm about to read them, Steve. It was wasn't a good fight. These they were saying it wasn't a good fight. No, before they oh, were right, saying right. it wasn't a good fight and it was boring, or whatever. It really wasn't boring at all. Like it was actually really, it was a really high level good fight, great fight, five rounds, five rounds of, of greatness. Yeah, it was quite good. Um, but yeah, I was saying uh, I love the interaction this segment brings because there are 68 <laughs> unread comments that I have yet to see. So let's go through them because we do that every week anyway. Always very fun to see the reactions of the people here. And uh, if Alvin showed up because uh, he did, he did? Oh, wonderful. Just wonderful. So let's see. Where are we? Um, okay. I think I got it. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, I went a little bit too far maybe. Um, hold on, kill any time. Oh, popcorn is ready for Centro, right? There we go. Uh, Jimmy says, I did not enjoy this fight, but if anyone can change my mind, it's Ghost. Can't wait to see how it <laughs> evolves here. Um, Rain says he hated this fight. My goodness. Uh, Stamina says, Wow, okay, I'd expect Hughes. To okay, they're talking about the other fight. Uh, he says, But Ghost is so cool, I'll give it a try. Um, is that Justin Gaethje in the pictures in the beginning? Yes, James, it's uh, him and Whitman. Uh, Jimmy says, this is so cool, positions and striking. Uh, Jen says, man, ghost with the diagrams, always. Rue says, what a start, such a cool concept on the track, squared off and on the fence. Rain says, WMA today, plus ghost phantom. Uh, <laughs> these guys say it's better than There's a other few people. of them in there, don't read them all. Okay. <laughs> I, I really do appreciate what Rain was doing, but yes, yeah, no, fair enough, caught me there. Um, James says, "Who knew that this fight was so technical?" Well, the ones who watched it. <laughs> uh, Rain says, "Yeah, but those." Oh, he's yeah, still talking about that. Uh, Centro points out the stank. Yes, I enjoyed the stank as well. Uh, Rue says, "Defense tracks and squared is the theme today." Yes, it is. Um, there he is. Alvin! <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Wow, just came in time for the Mr. Phantoms breakdown. Yes, there you go. Um, Ruth says, geez, I wonder who those three women are that can catch kicks. <laughs> Jimmy says, ghost calling out Yusuf. <laughs> yeah. Centro says, ha didn't someone from the mailbag say that Vera was gun shy? Uh, probably. I don't remember that specifically, but yes, I'm sure that's exactly what it was referencing. Who's calling out Yusuf? Um, Oh, was that Yusuf? Okay, see, I'm all over the place these days. James says, squaring people up. That's a neat trick. Uh, Jin says, no inside low kick this week. There was one. Right there was one. He was a little, that was probably before. Okay, no. Yes, brilliant. plenty of front kicks. Jamie says, oh, man, Vieira has good distance control to be able to force Tate to overextend. Uh, James says, throw more front kicks, people. Uh, damn, so squaring off is a positional technique that can help anyone. Yep. Jen says, I thought the fight was boring, but when you look at this breakdown, I miss so much stuff. 
fucking commentary, man. Uh, Rue says, spicy talk by ghost, but who is he referring to? <laughs> Four question marks. Uh, Stamina says, saucer of milk needed after all these catty video captions. <laughs> Alvin says, I love the display of heart and skills uh, by these two, but this makes me appreciate both fighters even more. You have me on my seat right now, Mr. Phantom. Oh, getting, getting Alvin fired up. Uh, yeah. Jin, Jin says... <laughs> Ghost isn't making fun of either fighter. Who is he referring to when he says gunshire managing distance? James is laughing. Fantasy fiction book. Got them all cackling. Uh, <laughs> the unmitigated sass. I'm so here for it, says Stamina. Indeed. Uh, Jin says Ghost with his fantasies about Ketlin. <laughs> Ruth says so spicy today. Rain says, oh, my God, he has fantasies about <laughs> Citro, maybe Tate should have listened to Ghost. <laughs> uh, Citro says, I saw JHK say that Tate had not improved. This is clearly wrong, man. How does Ghost do this every time? <laughs> uh, Jimmy says, Misha looked good for those first 30 seconds. Yeah, I mean, that was a great start in the fifth round, the fourth round, whichever one it was. Um, James is so disappointing that Tate couldn't maintain that pace. Easier said than done, right, as, as Ghost pointed out. Um, Jen says, Holy crap, this is going every single round. <laughs> I told you it was a doozy today. <laughs> you did the whole fight. Uh, yeah. Rain says, Off nice, uh, front. Oh, nice front kick there by Tate. Is the front kick the new inside low kick? Says Rue. Uh, James says, Front kick is the new inside low kick, guys. And yes, he's repeated him. Uh, Rain says, Lovely jab and counter uppercut. New appreciation for Vera. That's great to see. Citra says, Ghost just solved the boring fighter. Everyone just slipped the inside. <laughs> Uh, Rue says countering to the step is brilliant. Uh, James says, holy shit, Ghost is obsessed with hooking off the jab and Tate just hooked off the body jab. <laughs> I skipped that one, but that's a good one. Uh, James says, Ghost calling out Yusuf. Sincho says, I think we just found the Phantom Punch breakdown of the year. I mean, in length, it's definitely the largest oh, guys. lot that's in a there. Good one. Uh, Alvin says, what a genius breakdown. I mean, Alvin, still of approval, obviously. Uh, Stamina says the indirects within the commentary were the most powerful strikes landed. 50-45 ghosts on all scorecards. <laughs> and he says, Ghost says, called out Yusuf for this one. And the commentary was horrendous. Yes, it was. Uh, Stamina says, appeal to the authority is an all too common logical fallacy. Jin says, what a wonderful breakdown. Completely changed my mind about this fight. Thank you, Ghost. That's what I love to hear, Jin. Thank you, Ghost, indeed. He yeah. is a miracle worker. Jimmy says, Ghost has dropped some massive truth bombs. <laughs> He's opening eyes over here, this guy. I love it. Uh, Stamina says, one day we'll be able to kill the fight commentary and just hear the cage mics. It'd be nice. I know. that That's a dream. That's that's one thing that, I mean, I I love the Ryzen commentary. I think Joe Ferraro is great, uh, you know, and yeah. pretty much anyone he goes with. He's got Damian Brown right now. But if you notice, they when they re-upload them on YouTube, they don't have commentary Very at all. It's kind of cool. Especially when you go from like watching live and maybe you want to revisit, and you're like, oh, you just, it's a little, it's a different atmospheric feeling. So, uh, every every promotion should at least have an option, whether it's live or afterward, like Ryzen does. Because uh, it I would like be that. nice. Yeah, maybe uh, it would maybe it would just people would be able to watch fights for themselves, you know, and not have to not have to get a biased opinion because that's what basically it it is it's just an opinion from from somebody i mean sure they fought or whatever but that doesn't mean that they're that they're right obviously <laughs> yeah um, and we're seeing a lot more of that yeah it's scott asking here uh, which commentators do you like to have on the broadcast so who are your favorites steve we think was so good man as she as really is there she's done she's done really really good um i really do like michael bisbing He's he's kind of hit and miss though. Like when he's with DC, he's not good. But when he's with Anik, when it's just Anik and when it's just Anik and um and Bisbing, they're really good. They work really well together. Senko, if it was Anik, Bisbing, and Senko together, I think it would. I think that's the the dream trio for the UFC. To be honest, they really do need to give Senko some more time though. They really do. Yeah, not too bad there at all. Um, assuming you're speaking UFC specifically here, Scott, since I did mention the Ryzen team, and shout out to Joe Ferraro, of course. Yeah, I mean, um, there's, I mean, if you, 
Bellator can just fucking do what, like, just get rid of everything, <laughs> and I would be fine with it. But like, there's for the UFC, which is obviously the most watched MMA, probably. most rotating groups too. That's true. Yeah, I actually did like Dan Hardy on there. I was gonna say Hardy and Gooden were pretty solid. Hardy, I like them with Felder too. Like you throw him in. I mean, I'm yeah. fine with just the two of them. I think they should. I mean, Hardy and Gooden were really good know. together. I don't. We're not gonna see them again. Well, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> but uh, of course, for me, I think um, I really like uh, I, Dominic, of course, and I know I can get, get flack for that. Dominic's my guy. I love Dominic. Um, yeah, him and DC are like the same person. No, no. Yeah, they're, I, they're both I think... assholes, dude. Like they're both <laughs> have these like opinions, and don't fucking put Bisbing and and Cruz together. Oh my god, <laughs> why? Like, why did they do that? Yeah, and, they're like, they're kind of similar to uh, Joe and DC, like having a little bit too much fun, um, whatever you want to call it. But uh, I think uh, I do like Paul too. I think Paul Felder's pretty good. So if I was to have like a trio, maybe. Maybe Anik, Dominic, and Felder. I can take I can take most people with Dominic and uh, Anik, but um, yeah, I don't know. I I do enjoy for like a, from an entertainment standpoint, Joe Rogan with Dominic and Anik, just because Dominic always just tells him like straight up if something's wrong. <laughs> like I love that, and that's, it's needed for Joe definitely. Yeah, so that's true. But we haven't seen Dominic in in there for a while. Yeah, it's been, it's a, been a long bit. time. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's, he's in fight camp right now, so yeah, do it. that's why. Yeah, but um, Jimmy says applause for Ghost. Rue says Ghost eye for detail is something else. It sure is. Um, Rain says Ghost was able to change my mind. Hell yeah, um, he appreciates the compliments. Stamina stands up and applauds. <laughs> uh, Rue with some more applause. Rain says he's waving the flags for Ghost now. Got to got to stitch together the Kana one with the Ghost one, of course. Um, Citra says that was so much to soak in. Got to watch the segment again. Oh, you know it. Uh, James says just remember when Anik said some BS about custody battles. He's not very good. Well, those insertions are definitely weird and not great. But I don't know if I'd say that you know makes him awful. Um, it's weird. It just yeah, makes it weird. Off. Like, like why? <laughs> why? Yeah, those those were head scratchers. And who knows if he was fed that line to you know throw in for whatever ESPN reasons. No, no. You never know. But uh, Anik right. was never like that before. No. So, no, no. you know, it's coming from somewhere. Yeah. Bruce says Gooden was great. He's a pro. Yeah. Yep. Uh, stamina says Bisping is awesome for technique and insight for opinion and understanding of rules, much less so. He's the one most likely to go off topic, which either could be hilarious or distracting. Yep, very yep. true. Um, James says good in Sanko and Hardy if he was still there. Uh, okay, throw Laura in with those two would be very interesting. I don't think they're uh, good and Hardy were, were really Just good fine. together. Just yeah. those two together. Sanko obviously would do fine with them. But I think that Gooden and Hardy were were very good together. It's going to be interesting what they're going to do once things start opening up and they go they go into Europe again. Who's going to be on? Is it going to be Bisbing and Gooden? Well, I think Gooden yeah. lives over there. I think so. Yeah. Is it going to be Bisbing though? You know, I mean, he's British, but he lives in LA. So yeah, I don't know. he's Americanized, yeah. <laughs> fully Americanized. Oh, yeah, one hundred percent now. But I mean, he's still British, of course. Like, who are they? Are they going to throw Darren Till in there with him? Oh my God! Can you imagine that train wreck? No, that, <laughs> yeah, that would be fucking amazing. Oh boy. Yeah, Centro says Ro joking is better commentary. Jen says honestly, no commentary is best. Uh, Rue says Go should just do fight companion. <laughs> uh, James says, "Yeah, why is he doing that?" Um, oh yes, Jimmy points out. Remember when Joe Rogan said Jan was eating Stylebender's faints? Oh, good times, good times, and my oh my, thank you for spending it with us, you guys. I that was a whole lot, whole lot of interaction. Love to see the enthusiasm every single week. Love to see the great 
analysis that Ghost Banner provides us ever so kindly. And I'm glad that I could get that to work because it wasn't looking great there at the beginning of the show. Um, so, yeah. Good shit there as we reach the end right around the one hour 30 mark once again.